Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to LinkedIn Tips and Tricks. I am your webinar host today, Adam Mayer. I'm the Director of Career Development in the Center for Career Services at Montclair State. Our main website is on the lower left there, and our main email address, as well as our phone number in terms of any sort of follow-up. Uh, this webinar will be recorded, and those of you who are attending, uh, we do have a list of uh, you know, information and all your sort of credentials there. I will send a link, hopefully today, maybe later tomorrow, with a copy of this presentation along with a survey. So please complete the survey as well as, you know, as best as you can. Please be honest. Uh, the responses are anonymous. I mean, you don't have to put your name in there. So this helps us to, you know, make our services better as we go along. So uh, that having been said, we'll begin now. I'll go through the site live a little bit. We'll just do some PowerPoint slides, but in terms of questions, comments, thoughts, if you would just reserve them to the end. There's plenty of time for, for Q&A and there is the Q&A uh, function here on, on our webinar. So uh, let's give this a shot. Moving forward. There's some you know, general statistics, and this is kind of scary to me. 70 to 80% of jobs are not posted or advertised, yet job seekers spend 70 to 80% of their time surfing their net for jobs instead of connecting with individuals. So we've seen this before, and the conversation usually revolves around the term black hole. I think we've all sort of either heard of it, seen it, been involved in it, not liked it in the end, no, no matter what. So to make some real connections, and LinkedIn is probably the premier way, especially considering the climate we're in right now, to reach out virtually and network. So try not to spend too much time on the internet, internet job boards, because as we can see here, uh, those sort of giant application streams that we might provide uh, you know, in our job search to ourselves typically aren't really that helpful. So have to keep that in mind. So nine out of 10 uh, recruiters use LinkedIn. This dude right over here, he's the guy who's out of the loop. All of these recruiters are cool. This guy is not. So anyway, we're not going to be like that guy. So here's how you can get their attention. Those nine cool ones, those recruiters, uh, five must have profile sections, education, photo, which is my favorite subject on LinkedIn. And I have an excellent article published on LinkedIn uh, that outlines some of the, uh, the career ending gaps that can occur in terms of the photo. Number three is experience, volunteer experience, four, and then round it out by skills. So we are going to look at those profile sections primarily today, along with some other tips and tricks. But if we look on the right, 75% of hiring managers look at profiles to learn about a candidate. This is not surprising. In fact, I think that number should be probably higher. Here too, I've seen things where 93% uh, of employers, if they're interested in us after having seen our resume and or other information, they're Googling us. And part of Google results, as we know, if we have a LinkedIn profile, that's part of our internet footprint, that's the way to play it. So maybe that having been said, if we could just rewind for two seconds, if you're not on LinkedIn, you want to get there. Hugely important. It's the social media darling right now in terms of the job search. Microsoft purchased it a few years ago for $2.3 billion, right? Crazy numbers. Why? Because it's data. They have people's data. So who knows? That's another scary subject. Let's, we, we can continue. But before we looked at these five, five must-have profile sections, I do want to sort of address this one. And this was a little tricky for me. Uh, it might be tricky for you. So it's what's called the featured section. And I'd seen, in, you know, the suggestions on how to maximize, optimize your LinkedIn profile. You want to have a featured section. So I'm like, all right, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty cool. I know what's going on. Well, I didn't have one. There was a problem there. So what I ended up doing was looking into it. Why don't I have a featured section? So I, I, got in touch with my buddy who's a LinkedIn guru and he's like, yeah, it's right under the about section right here. You know, that's sort of like the summary that you might have on your resume. 
the about section is typically, you know, I always call it the trailer to a movie, right? This outlines some of the best skills, qualities you have that an employer might like to see. And, you know, based on what the trailer can offer, hopefully the employer continues to read on. So I had that section, but I didn't have this featured section underneath it because that's typically where that category will fall. Now, we don't have a featured section unless, and here's something you guys don't have to bother yourselves with, you need to upload media to the about section in order to get a featured section. Don't go through the, the, what it, the consternation. Don't, you don't have to go through the frustration. It wasn't really too much anxiety. It was just like, look, I can't figure this out. Why don't I have this? You know, LinkedIn's always suggesting, hey, add a profile piece here, blah, blah, blah. I didn't have one. So after, you know, searching around on the internet, add content to the about section. It can be articles. It can be awards. It could be pictures. It could be movie files. It could be a ton of things. So once I added those to the about section, I was all anxious, like, all right, now I'm going to finally be cool and have a featured section. Well, it didn't happen for a couple of days. So it had to sort of cycle through once LinkedIn realized I had content in the about section, they then magically made this appear for me. And then I felt much better. I don't like this blurry shot. I don't like that. But anyway, so this was an article that I posted. This was a webinar that I'd done. This was an article that I wrote on LinkedIn. So I only say that because it takes all different kinds of media. And again, put it in the about section, your featured section will, you know, get, become alive and, and part of your profile soon thereafter a couple of days. So that's the featured section. Definitely add media to about. So education. Well, this is what we're all doing, isn't it, right? So 10 times, members who list a school are 10 times more likely to get views on average. So definitely add your degree, the institution, any clubs, honors, you know, anything that sort of adds to your profile. Now, I know some of us, I've been out of school for quite some time. And if I was on a job search, frankly, I might be concerned about ageism, right? That does exist. I've seen it. People are either conscious or unconscious of that bias. And they might think, hey, we want some young folks in here. Uh, we want some new blood. This dude's a little bit too old. Not sure what he's up to. But with that, sometimes you want to include your dates if it's a recent degree. And then again, maybe somebody who's in my position, we don't want to include the dates that we graduated. LinkedIn allows you to post education with or without having the dates that you graduated. So you have a little bit of control there. Just, a, just sort of an aside. So certainly add education. And we all know too that sometimes we can, when we go into edit, we can drag categories. So my education category, similar to where my education would be on my resume, is at the bottom. Now to sort of circumvent that, at the top in my summary, I mentioned a little bit about my education in the about section. So hopefully that, that satisfies the employer's interest in my level of education, but again, lots of different ways to play it. No matter what, have it listed. Number two, the photo. Look at this guy, Alexander Fisher. He's cool, right? He's got a collared shirt. He's smiling. Yeah, he looks presentable. He looks like a professional. He's a reasonable guy. So you're 21 times more likely to get views if you have a photo. If you don't have a photo, you're less likely to be viewed there. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. It's right there, black and white. And when people go to connect with you, maybe they see your job title, maybe they see who, you know, you're the institution that you graduated from, whatever it is, and they don't see a picture, some folks are less likely to reach out. They're like, ah, this person's phoning it in, or maybe they're a ghost on LinkedIn. You know, they just created a profile and walked away. We definitely don't want that. And, and LinkedIn is phenomenal, even if you're not job searching. It's about professional development. It's about recognition in your field. It's about representing your employer. It's about representing the institution that you graduated from. It's a PR thing. It's good. You definitely want to have it and have a picture. So let me pop out of here for a second and share a different screen, this here. So, the 10 worst LinkedIn profile pictures ever. 
that's quite a title. That's definitely up my alley. Now, look at this dude, party animal. Okay, bro, not a good idea. And of course, they've sort of embellished these photos a little bit. It's the sort of thing where it's not as particular. Um, so, and these were all, I think they got permission to do this. And these certainly aren't real LinkedIn profile pics. So there's a party animal, the throwback. Hey, I got married. I was cool that day. It was, it was a great time. The happy parent, hey, here's my baby. Check me out with my baby. Is that pro? I don't know. Does she work? You know, does she run a child care, child, child care provider agency? And it's kind of a tough one to, to rectify. The adventurer, check me out. I got my Remington rifle. I'm, I'm very outdoorsy. I have a very serious uh, uh, passion for adventure. Okay. The sportsman, uh, LinkedIn was interesting in here. You know, unless you're a professional athlete, avoid using an action shot. I'm not like, I don't hate this one. I don't think that's terrible. But this guy, okay, brah, you know, the dark side, let's get moody. You know, I mean, the professional world typically isn't about that sort of vibe, right? Uh, the top model, woohoo. If you're good looking, this is a plus good for you. <laughs> this guy's an interesting uh, writer on LinkedIn, so. What else? A couple more. Oh, okay. So you're a reservoir dog, secret agent. You must be cool. Now, again, what's what's the, the bottom line here? Be professional. It should be a headshot. You should have some contrast in the background. Have your friend, I mean, smartphones today are ridiculously good. So have a friend or family member take a quick picture. Make sure there's contrast in the background. Like I said, something like, uh, you know, whether there's a window or a picture. Uh, maybe a bookcase, something along those lines. But again, it should be shoulders up, professional, reflective of the industry you want to pursue. This dude wants to be in a Tarantino film. Okay, maybe. Geek, Christmas hat, not sure what that means. And it goes on and on. So that's definitely not what we want to do with the LinkedIn profile pick. So be cool, have a good shot. Number four, volunteer experience is super important. A lot of employers look for this. 41% uh, of hiring managers consider volunteer experience equally as valuable as paid work experience. That's big. So if you can make room on your resume to include volunteerism, do it. LinkedIn is a no brainer because we don't have page restrictions, sure. Uh, what you want to do is sort of check out what I'm calling, um, not what I'm calling, that's what they call it jerseycares.org for opportunities. Now you might be asking me, look, we're in quarantine. You know, how am I going to do this volunteer? So things are starting to open up. You know, I think that um, some parks, golf courses, the things are starting to look up. I'm, I'm not going to get too optimistic, but if you were to, you know, pursue volunteerism in this respect, I did do a look up again. This is jerseycares.org. This I looked up about two weeks ago. So you put in your zip code, you put in the amount that you're willing to travel within that radius, you know, 25 miles, 10 miles, whatever it is. And then they talk about the opportunity in terms of volunteerism. So personal shopper, the organization name, bingo time with veterans and Paramus, earth keepers, carrying closet, games galore, pet therapy, book buddies. I mean, pretty cool. So again, location where it is, you sign up, it's a free website and it satisfies that volunteer piece that employers look for. So always try and have that. Jerseycares.org. Number five, skills. They raise your ranking in recruiter searches. If you list up to five or more skills, you get up to 17 times more profile views. This is um, kind of a contentious subject, skills, because I could write that, you know, one of my skills is that I'm a nice guy. And you might be like, I don't know you, dude. I just, you're on this webinar. So what? But if I say in some point in my profile that I've done philanthropy, I've given back to the community, fundraising, volunteer time at the ASPCA, you might believe it then that I'm a good guy. But there's no real way to know. So somebody might endorse you for things, me for things, and there's oftentimes no real check or balance. That's what I mean about sort of this contentious piece, but no matter what, have some skills. 
listed in this in your LinkedIn profile. You can add them. Check out other people's profile who have a similar degree, who work in a similar field, people who have a similar job title to you. See what their profile is. That's an easy way to sort of get a temperature check on what you have and what, what's professional to include. And or if you're looking at your competition, they have a ton of skills that um, you know we don't have. Maybe I need to look into professional development based on that. No matter what, they're saying list five or more skills and then just sort of populate those. So this individual was endorsed 50 times for financial analysis, 35 for financial modeling, 20 for internal. You get the picture. So how do you get folks to do that? Do what I call scratching backs. So go into their profile. And if you know honestly, legitimately that they have those skills, then endorse them. Some people might think, oh, that was cool. I'm going to step over there to their profile and endorse them again. For scratch and backs, it's a nice way to do it. But add them, and again, have five or more. So I mentioned sort of, uh, you know, how to look at skills and those sort of things. But with LinkedIn, what you definitely want to do, too, is consider optimizing your, your profile. And when you apply to jobs, looking at those skill sets, that's a number of different things. But this is less of the LinkedIn side, although JobScan does provide LinkedIn optimization for a fee. JobScan is a great way to help you apply to a position and optimize what you're doing. So the website is jobscan.co. There's no M. That's not a typo. And you do have to register. I've been with them for quite a while. And some of you have listened to me before, you, you've probably heard of it. Um, if you haven't, this is your new best friend. And it's probably the coolest thing you'll see out there for your day today. So what you do is basically copy and paste your resume alongside the job description, and it'll give you a report. So here's a screenshot from the site itself. Copy and paste your resume, copy and paste the job description. Once you hit scan, it'll give you this sort of report. This answers that black hole that we talked about in the beginning. Um, so I have a 23% match between my resume and the job description. I'm never going to get a phone call. How do I get a phone call? How do I get an email? How do I get that door open so I can get the interview? So I got to tweak some things or I need to do professional development. So with that counseling, we can see I mentioned once on the resume, it's mentioned nine times on the job description. Okay. Psychology, I don't mention at all, but it's mentioned three times in the job description. Again, do you have these skills? Do I have these skills? If that's the case, like customer service, sure, I've done that, but I don't mention it, but the job wants it. And if I go through these applicant tracking systems, they don't see it, and I'm less likely to make it to a person. So those are the hard skills part of that report. Soft skills, again, same, same. How many times do I mention on the resume? How many times on the job description? Can I work independently? Totally. I'm doing this webinar by myself for crying out loud, right? I don't even know if you guys are out. No, I know you're out. I'm kidding. I can work independently. I need to change my profile. I need to change the about section, say on my LinkedIn, whatever it is to satisfy what it is that the position requires. So back to LinkedIn, we can see here, this is uh, sort of the, the mobile version. This is a screenshot from the the website itself, but no matter what, this is fairly new. I think it's within the last six months to a year. This is what I call the bat signal. So LinkedIn gives you the option to sort of behind the scenes, let people know, recruiters in particular, let them know that you're interested and you're on a job search. So right under your name, right under this sort of thing, you can click on the blue pen, you're open to opportunities. You can indicate job titles. You can indicate locations. You can indicate the position type, full-time, part-time, internship, and so on. Again, this is not listed to, to for your current employer to see and say, you know, that could certainly be where, hey, everything looks good, and you're looking for another job, really. So, yeah, not a bad idea. It's called the career interests section. Let recruiters know you're open to job opportunities. I have worked with job seekers who have used this. Some said it's worked, some said it hasn't, but why not you know, shine a bright light on the fact that you're interested in you know, 
job opportunities and let the people who know, let, let those know who have those opportunities that you're open to. So that's career interests. So see the possibilities, another section within LinkedIn, this is the money shot. And let's actually pop out of the uh, presentation and head over to LinkedIn for a sec and look at what they call the alumni tool. This is super important. So I believe I'm here. Okay. So we're on the site live. Look up your institution. You can look up your community college. You can look up the institution where you received any sort of degree certification and you can get into this stuff. So we can see here, there are 96,154 current students and alumni who are on LinkedIn. That's a lot. It's a huge sample size. We want to make that uh, a little bit more palatable by changing some of the searches. So anyway, long story short, look up your institution and then look up alumni. Now, what are the implications? You can find out entry level job titles from the graduating class from a couple of years ago. So you can then have an idea of what's actual with those job titles. You can use them in keyword searches, say on Indeed. You can also list a number of employers that you know hire MSU graduates. Why not apply to employers that, you know, in, in a forum, in an environment where you're a known quantity because of where you graduated? Again, this is the official university page, in this case from Montclair State. Now the implications for this are huge. Now, whether or not you went to, you know, an Ivy League or where, you know, I went to OCC, right? Ocean County College. I got my associates there years ago. Can I go in there and check out what some of the graduates are doing? Sure. Can I go in and check out Yale, Princeton, you know? Can I check out, I didn't go there. Can I check out what some of their graduates are doing? Sure, I can check that out too. Maybe I'm interested in an advanced degree. Or maybe my uncle's got a kid, you know, and this person is interested in applying to colleges. You're like, look, I don't know what graduates do for a living. I want to return on this investment. Use the alumni lookup. So in this case, again, we're checking things out for Montclair alumni. We can start with the graduation year, the end year. You could search by job title. What I typically like to do, I'll open this up a little bit more. What I do like is to start with degree. So whatever it was that they studied, I can then go through that. Let's just say psychology, 7,500 and change. So that's certainly gonna drop down that sample size considerably. So where they work, these, this number is misleading. This is most likely current students. Some of them are you know, gonna be employees, but so some of the top employers for psych majors from Montclair, Care Plus New Jersey, Rutgers, State of New Jersey, ADP, Newark Public Schools, Verizon, so, so you see the idea. Get a list, develop a list of the top 10 employers based on your degree and who hires those folks. You can go even further, and I, I don't wanna get too much because I know we're, uh, probably don't want to show everybody's profile, but no matter what, when you do find somebody who you'd like to network with, there's two options. It's like the matrix, right? Which way are you going to go? What are you going to choose? You could add a personal note when you choose to connect with somebody on LinkedIn, or you can just send them that canned sort of cheesy, eh, you know, I want to add you to my LinkedIn network. Eh, add a note. Always add a note. Copy and paste what you typically would write on a Word doc, on a post-it on your desktop. Copy and paste, boom, boom, change the name, send it out. What I typically suggest is three sentences. You can go a lot further with that, no matter what doing. So it could be something like, dear so-and-so, I'm a current MSU student pursuing a degree in, and then insert your degree, or I'm a fellow alum from Montclair State, with a degree in so-and-so, something like that. That would be one sentence. The second could be, I'm interested in learning more about your field. And then the third, third sentence could be, uh, do you have any recommendations? You know, thank you. I hope, hope all is all well, sincerely. Something like that. The reason why we want to start networking and in addition to send a personal note with folks from Montclair is it's what's called a warm 
contact. What's warm about it? You guys share the same institution. So you're not coming out of left field. And people are like, oh, the internet's weird, right? We all know that. That's not, that's not news. So always let somebody know by way of that personal note that you share Montclair State. It's the easiest way to get your foot in the door and hopefully maybe get some information, get some suggestions. And because you've written a note and because you're networking, that's the best way to start a relationship. With networking, it's all about relationships. The craziest networker is the one who just meets you and said, hey, you got any jobs available? And that happens a lot. It's totally unsophisticated. I don't even know. I guess it's disingenuous because there's kind of like, hey, you help me now. You, know, you just met me. That's not, it's not the way we want to go. So start the relationship, start the note, and follow up with your contacts from time to time. If there's industry-specific notes, articles, things, groups to follow on LinkedIn, those things are always good ways to get out there. So uh, maybe one more thing. So that's the alumni look up. One more thing uh, before we leave the live site is this one. So I'm on my main page, right? I can show recruiters that I'm open. Remember that one? That's cool. But this is the piece I want you to remember. Edit public profile and Earl. Many of you have already done this. I get it, but I, I can't leave this stone unturned. So what you want to do is when you first create your LinkedIn profile, it's a bunch of letters, a bunch of numbers. It's not branded. You want to brand it. So include your name, your first name, last name, first initial, last name, whatever it is, right? It's just like any other convention. It'll tell you, hey, that's taken. Do you want to try this? Just like creating an email address. So customize your universal resource locator in LinkedIn. And then go to town. Go to town. Where are you going to town? Four different places. So copy and paste this new address, right? Put it in your email signature. And it shows people anytime you communicate with them. Number one, you're on LinkedIn. Number two, you're cool because you've, you know, you've known to customize this address. Number three, it suggests the big daddy is that you're open to networking. So copy and paste the public profile address that's been amended, put that in the email signature, put that in the header of your resume. If you're using a cover letter, I know not everybody wants that or not every industry is into that, but if you do put that in the header of your cover letter, some people do networking business cards. It's a great way to sort of copy and paste the header from your resume. You know the LinkedIn profile is already there. Create business cards. If your social media platforms are professional, you can put it there. That would be sort of a bonus. That's the fifth one maybe. No matter what, edit it and then add it. And I'm, I feel like I'm on a, like a cooking show. Set it and forget it. Ron Popeil. Remember that guy? Maybe. Don't know. So that's the, that's the biggie there. So let's go back to the presentation. Let's see. So that's the alumni tool. And then, you know, a few thoughts here, follow companies, follow influencers, follow industries, make the best of your time on LinkedIn by being connected, checking these folks out. So in uh, some of the other things going forward, we do have a YouTube channel. There's tons of stuff on there. There's even more than this screenshot. Since the uh, pandemic, we've been doing everything online and there are a number of different workshops that have been added in addition to this. But don't just go on YouTube and look up MSU career workshops because you got Michigan State University, Mississippi State University, right? Don't worry about it. Just go to Google and search in MSU career workshops, one word, space, YouTube. MSU career workshops, space, YouTube, and then you'll see all this stuff. There's Hire Red Hawk. That's open to current students and alumni. That's your career management system. This will talk about how to upload your resume, how to use the system. I'll be talking about internships, public speaking, phone and video interviews, uh, tons of stuff. And this workshop will be on this YouTube channel. Again, I, I'm doing my best here. I hope to have it by the end of the day. 
If not, by tomorrow, I will send you a follow-up link, those who've attended with a copy of this presentation along with that survey, as I mentioned. So, all right, you made it. You did it. It was about a half hour. That wasn't too bad. So, I'll open it up to Q&A. If you guys have questions, thoughts, concerns, let me know. Okay, I do see the first question here is, can the picture be a professional selfie? Sure, I think the selfie one is, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, as long as it is professional. I mean, certainly headshot, as we said, dressed appropriately, that's a good way to play. What else here, let's see. Uh, should we include our degree after our name? Sure, why not? I'm a huge proponent of education and to sort of have that information right up at the top, the, the employer doesn't have to search for the degree. So something like, you know, an MA or a PhD or some sort of certification, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think it's good to have up at the top. How many are too many skills? Um, I wouldn't go crazy. We know we need at least five. So 10 seems like a reasonable number. I've seen people with, you know, dozens and dozens. It just looks like, hey, look at me. You know, I'm really cool. And maybe, maybe that person isn't. I don't know. Uh, is there a free version of JobScan? Yes. There is a free version. That's the version I'm on. What's nice is if you're not scanning, you get five free a month. So the point is there. Bank them. If you're not using them, they accumulate in your account. Uh, let's see. Input on experience. Uh, well, to me, LinkedIn is like the superior uh, version of the resume. So we include experience, you know, work experience, volunteerism on the resume. You certainly want to include that on LinkedIn as well. So that would hopefully that addresses that. Uh, how do I get multiple colleges to appear in my profile? I've listed them both within the edit link, but only one shows on the profile. Hmm. I'm not sure. I know I've listed, uh, I, I've had uh, three different institutions and they show up. I'm not sure. Did uh, OCC Stockton and then Muckler State. So. I'm not sure. I might uh, do the old LinkedIn help thing on that one. How far back should you go on experience? I'll rely on the old advice of resumes. Typically, it's 10 years. So anything beyond 10 years, we typically don't include. But then what's the counter argument? There's no length restriction. So with the resume, typically 10 years or less. With LinkedIn, if it's a long time ago, you don't always have to include the dates, but if it's, if it's experience that's transferable or relevant to what you're applying for, you can include it on LinkedIn. It's a personal choice, but it's nice because LinkedIn is like, uh, it's like a kitchen sink. Just keep it clean, right? All right, that seemed kind of cheesy. Let's go back. Can you talk a bit more about the uh, about me section? Sure. So about is up at the top. Again, that's sort of the trailer to a movie. I did not write mine in first person. And I also did not write it as if I was a pro wrestler, you know, talking about myself in third person, because that's kind of kooky, you know, like saying something like Adam has an extensive background. And I'm like, dude, it's my page. I approached it in writing the about section as if it was a summary of my resume. There's no first person. It really is just short, choppy sentences. They're not grammatically correct. They really just give you details on my education, my experience, and skills that I have that could relate to the position. So again, some of my top stuff, it could be soft skills, it could be hard skills, you know, like technology, it could be language skills, a number of different things there. Uh, some schools offer to take professional pictures. Uh, for LinkedIn, I love that. Does MSU? Yes, we have done that in the past. Uh, we've done that during career fairs when they were in person. Typically, why? Because everyone was dressed up. You know, people who knew about the career fair in advance, you know, they wore a nice suit, you know, um, 
nice clothing, blouse, you know, however it works. And it was a good time to do that. So keep your eyes peeled for events like that. But, you know, honestly, I would just dress up in the house for a minute, wherever you are, and, you know, get a decent background and do a headshot. You know, you could set it up and have it do, you know, do the selfie thing if that works or have somebody else take the photo. Uh, what else? Any do's or don'ts for banner photo at the top? I love that. Good question, Jeff. So, um, yeah, there's a certain number of pixels. What's going on with that background? So you have your LinkedIn photo of yourself, the little circle on the left, but then you've got that background. Put a picture in there. To me, it's like, you know, before you have people over, you're going to clean up, hopefully, right? <laughs> so when people come over to your LinkedIn profile, make sure it looks good. So easiest way, Jeff, to do this and everybody else, just look, just Google LinkedIn background photos. LinkedIn wallpaper photos. LinkedIn wallpaper images. It'll come up. It'll be the right size. It'll be professional. Some are really colorful. Some are... You know, designs, just make some, try and mirror something to your field, right? We're in the tri-state area, so I was able to pick up a picture of Central Park, right? So I got a little bit of nature, I got a little bit of the city, nothing crazy. So again, look up LinkedIn wallpaper images, and there'll be, there's tons of them. It's nuts. It's a great thing. Very helpful. If I have my current position as my header, but I'm looking for a new and more elevated position. How do I portray that on LinkedIn? Great question. Let's go, uh, let's pop over and look at, let's see, the share screen here, if we can go back to the main profile. So this is kind of a different way to do it. So rather than use your current job title, why not take this approach? And in terms of maybe elevating where you want to go next, talk about keywords, the things that you can do, the, the, the qualities that you possess. So in this case, I sort of did the nouns. So writer, podcaster, consultant, counselor, and so on. So these are sort of a catch-all list of things I believe I can do that an employer might want to see or that a fellow colleague might like to see in terms of networking. So I don't recommend... If you're currently job searching and you just use your regular job title, you can portray yourself in a different way by using this, this strategy here. What else? Other questions? Any? Let me see. I'm still going there. I think, did we get them all? Talked about skills, current position as a header. Okay. I think that's about it. Okay. I don't see any other questions at this time. So I appreciate y'all, uh, you know, sticking with it, checking out this webinar. I will do the follow-up. I wish y'all the best of luck. Stay safe, uh, be well, and take care. Thanks so much.